Welcome to this US Master video tutorial. In this video, we are showing the true autophoto workflow with US Master version 9.1. We will need a completed georeferenced project with acceptable results for the adjustment and orientation for all our images that we will use to generate the true auto photos. In a previous video called Info US Master version 9.1 Introduction to Surface Generation Workflows, we already explained the different workflows in US Master for different solutions. And therefore, for the true auto photos, Typically, we extract them from an area mapping project. In the area mapping project, we typically have Nadir looking photos, which is exactly what we want to extract for the true auto is looking straight down. And also in an area mapping project, typically all photos are flown at the same height and therefore all the photos have similar ground sample distance which would not be the case for close range projects or oblique imagery. This also makes the flight planning more easy to specify um, true auto ground sample distance or resolution that we are targeting for. True auto photo projects need some specific project settings. We will need or we recommend to have data with an 80-80% overlap. So 80% in the flight direction, within the strip, within the trajectory and 80% between these strips, trajectories or flight lines. This will allow us to look into steep areas covered from buildings or objects and therefore we can then create true auto rectified uh, data correctly without any gaps in the point cloud. In US Master the true auto workflow is based on the semi-global matching 2.5D algorithm. This workflow uses directly the point cloud to create the true auto photo without first true uh, without first auto rectifying each single photo and also without using any seam lines to stitch the auto photos together into a seamless mosaic therefore we will first run here in US master the radiometric optimization this will do some radiometric corrections in between the photos so that the true auto photo at the end will look more homogeneous. So we start the radiometric optimization and here we can now just run some radiometric corrections on intensity, on color, Additionally, also we do some vignetting correction. So in case the images are in the corners more dark than in the center and also some brightness correction is done automatically in this process. The corrections are stored in metadata informations. You can find them in your image folder as RDX files. So the original physical file, the JPEG file is not changed, but here these corrections in the radiometry are stored as metadata files. After the radiometric correction is done, we can close the radiometric correction and start the surface and auto generation. We see two windows opening up, the US edit window in the background and in front of it the point cloud 
manager, similar like in the classic autophoto generation video. Also here, we first need to run for our whole project, the surface generation. Without any surface, we are not able to do any editing, which is then done in a manual way, shown in a previous video. You can go back to the point cloud manager either with this icon or here file point cloud. We start surface generation and we can now select for our true auto photo generation the SGM 2.5D model type. I will create a new strategy for this here and I will call this now here the SGM two and a half D strategy say okay and then I can select here from the model type the surface SGM two and a half D model type the main difference between surface SGM two and a half D and 3d is not the input data of course, this will also have an influence if you have not only Nardi looking images, but if you also would have oblique images. But in the 2.5D, we use different filterings. We will filter the point cloud so that the facades of buildings will be more straightened up. So we will filter out points to make the facades more straight. And also very important, also some N edge enhancements where we'll try to make the building edges will also look very straight and not looking zigzaggy. So this is a very important part for the true auto photo generation to have buildings which is mostly the, the biggest target for true auto photo to make them look great in our final product. Therefore, we strongly recommend to use the SGM 2.5D process for true auto photos as your solution when you are targeting this. In the next part, we define our ground sample distance. So here we define on which extraction level we want to output our true auto photos. If we use high, then the output will be on the first pyramid level. So one to two, which means if you fly your project with two centimeter ground sample distance, then the extraction will here be four centimeters for high. For medium, it would be eight centimeters and for low, it would be 16 centimeters. Depending what true auto photo resolution you want to target, you can then choose this one here. The value itself is automatically determined. The next parameter, the acquisition, is now important based on our uh, redundancy of our images. So how many images can look at one position in our photo? By default, this value here is a minimum of two models set here for the minimum number of models, which is the automatic part, and also for the maximum is set to five. If you have more overlap, you can increase this value and say, I want to have at least three models looking at one point, or in case you did not fly with an 80% 80, 80 overlap, you can also reduce this value to one, and then you would even get for less dense area still points in your point cloud. We recommend at the beginning that you use automatic for both of them as then the algorithm will be here more adjusting. The filtering of low textured areas is not needed for true auto photos, mainly as I assume you are using Nadia looking images. This is typically when you have oblique data, then you can say I want to filter out the cloud or the sky in the background. And here you can define how much background you have in your photos. So if it's not much cloud or sky, then you use low. If you have a lot of sky in your background, of course, then you increase this value to a higher value part. 
the true autophoto output is always automatically generated with the SGM 2.5D work process. Therefore, we don't need here to define any true autophoto output. We will show in the output later when this is finished where our photos are stored. The afterwards uh, uh, settings for the mesh uh, are as mentioned here for the mesh, which we will not cover in this video here, but we will just run here the SGM 2.5D process with the true autophoto generation. I will set here my extraction level to high, store my strategy, and then we will run now here with these settings our true autophoto. You will need to have at least 16 GB of RAM if you want to run it on extraction level high. If you don't have 16 GB or more RAM, then you will need to reduce your extraction level to medium to be able to process. You see, in my case, my computer only has 12 GB of RAM and therefore I will not continue. I will set the extraction level to medium, store it, start it, and then we can now process this data here. The SGM 2.5D process has finished and we want to take a look at the result. The point cloud is stored directly in the project folder. So when we go to our project folder here, we can see in this project folder the point cloud dot last file which is for the whole project area our SGM dense point cloud. Additionally in the temp folder that we can define in our preferences which you can find here. Just need to close here the processing window and in the options preferences we have our oh sorry not in the US edit but in the applications master US applications master here options preferences here you can define your working directory and this is where the true auto photos will then be stored after the SGM 2.5D work process so when we go back we can here just close this window here and take a look into our output folder and then we can find here in the temp folder the point cloud uh, subfolder 21 minus point cloud and here we can then find in the uh, DSM auto refined our true auto photos and they are tiled automatically just to assure for large projects that they will be nicely uh, run and also because for each of these tiles we are running some filtrages like mentioned the point clouds along the facades are filtered out to make them nice and smooth and also for the edges to make them sharp for our true auto photo generation. If we look at the TFW, we can see here that the TFW for this file here is nine centimeters. And when we take a look at the photo itself, we can then see it here um, that this portion was here true auto rectified. Well, we are here at the edge, so let's go here more into the center part. And then we can see here the true autophoto. In cases where the true autophoto has occlusion areas, we can also see or no DTM area. Then it tries to interpolate first, and then if it's too large, it even creates then gaps. Yeah, but if we go into the center part of our project itself, I hope I find here a center part here. Then we can now see here the true autophoto for this area generated. 
the true auto photos are seamless that means this tile and the next tile here they are pixel by pixel uh, aside to each other so you can just copy here this complete folder to have your mosaic for your complete project area one last file let's go back to our um, 21 minus point cloud folder when we look at the Trimble report log file we can now see here the settings that we were using for our point cloud generation we can see our computer information that I have only 12 gigabyte of RAM and also that we were running this on the second pyramid level and also that we are using minimum models by default two and we also used two and that we use a maximum of five models uh, by default and we also used five here we can see the ground sample distance that was created with nine centimeters and our tile size which is 22 by 22 meters for one of our two auto photo tiles and finally a last statistic is here the time that was used for processing and we can see that the true auto photo generation itself is only using 8% of the processing for our demo data mainly because it's um, a product from the colorized point cloud that was used to run the true auto photo itself so I close here the Trimble report log file and then we can see now here our dense point cloud and then we can again here uh, select areas and then select and start loading it into the editor we can here colorize the points and then take a look here at the data itself with the contour lines or we can also use here shaded relief without the points and the contours on top of it um, but for the visualization and displaying um, we will show this in a different video there are also some already existing videos for us master how to display the data i want to thank you very much for watching this video tutorial about true auto photo generation in us master and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.